Oh, uh, oh, shit. Uh, a bit more oh my god, it's hard to watch. Yeah, <laughs> that's a messed up brain surgery right there. Oh, Jesus. Hey guys, Dr. Gary Linkov here of City Facial Plastics in New York City. So I'm a facial plastic surgeon and a hair restoration surgeon. And this video was brought to my attention recently by my video editor, Marco. This one's called, I Built a Surgery Robot. It's pretty clever. I kind of like skimmed through it earlier and I'm gonna do a full reaction for you guys now, but it's very interesting and pretty amazing what this young like 20 year old guy was able to do. And uh, yeah, I'll give you some of my thoughts. Here we go. The surgical system is the most advanced as streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available surgery in the world today. Brain. I can build that. And what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry? Now I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck, but I can do robotics. And let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this, $2 million for one shitty robot. They can spend that on a couple hundred bandages. So I remember when the Da Vinci first came out onto the market and hospitals were buying them up and there wasn't really that much great research at the time to support the use of these robots. Robots. And there were even some studies I remember for like the prostate literature that showed that there were some disadvantages to using the robot. And yet there were hospitals that would buy the robot. And most of the time it was for like marketing purposes, honestly, which is a little bit sad. But in a way, things have, I think, advanced over time. And there are definitely some advantages to using the robot. Now it's used in like heart surgery and head and neck surgery, all types of different surgeries. And it really allows you to have like unparalleled visualization of different structures and it really reduces like blood loss, which is another big plus. But there are serious disadvantages like the cost, like the fact that it takes up, you know, half of a room. Usually surgeries take longer when you're using it. And some surgeons, they get so comfortable and they learn primarily how to only do robotic surgery these days for certain things. They maybe don't feel as comfortable doing open surgery, which, you know, imagine if the robot stops working and you're the patient on the table. You'd like your surgeon to be able to just kind of finish it off the old way. Those are some of the pros and cons of you know robotics in surgery but yeah I mean I think one of the troubling things is that there's just kind of this rat race between hospitals of like getting more and more robots to say that hey like patients should come to me because I've got this amazing robot or I have like 10 robots and that other hospital across the street has five robots so we'll see where he's gonna go with this uh, video but he makes a good point here that they, that they are super expensive we can build a better surgery robot for a lot less come on the biggest flaw in da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky slow robots arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good fucking luck with these robotic arms. They're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail carriage? What a dipshit. Hey man, shut the fuck up. This shit's hard. Make me a little bitch. I'm the narrator. I'm like, God, you can't kill me. I'm and we thought that surgeons have a god complex. Look at this guy. See, it uses wheel bearings to travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, for power we're using a brushless DC motor and an O drive to turn this into kind of like a brushless servo motor. Do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not. I've never done this before. <laughs> well I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer, so we can see what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the like calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick! Uh, I think it, it should be a little faster though. Oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those up. Let's try it out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad, 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 bad. I can see that being a potential hazard in the operating room. <laughs> Just this thing like running across the room. Uh, that's pretty funny though. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's fast. Give me one second. Okay, you just stand, stand right there. Whoa, oh, he's gonna freak cool. her out here. So we just gotta put a few of these together. I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. 
It's not like I can go to Home Depot and quarantine. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the X axis, but now we have two additional motors on the Y axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other. They don't know how to cooperate. But if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. You know, I had this thought recently that I kind of want my daughter to go into like software engineering because you can like build anything when you have these skills. Like I wish I knew how to code and do all that. It's all these thoughts that I get about like, how do you make this better, that better? And I wish I could like actually make it work and write the code and so it's pretty cool like this young guy with this ability to code is now like trying to apply it to robotics and surgery I mean it's pretty amazing what like power you have when you know these languages for coding. Yeah, you can make it, you can make it do this shit. Maybe not as stable as you'd want it to be, but it's just a prototype. <laughs> Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. It's gonna be much more refined, much more medical looking, you know, much more safe for the user. And all that movement was controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not gonna show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring, so we- Psych, I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this dynamic. Uh, look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. I don't know anything about this stuff. Hopefully, as he gets to some of the more clinical things, I'll be able to jump in with comments. But how are you gonna move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient? Well, that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play. That's the thing that's gonna move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down, which is great. There's just a small problem, slight problem. Well, I built it. I built it, which is a good thing. My original plan was, you know, just to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate. Easy. But then I fucking, I saw that thing. <laughs> Okay, there's no way that's gonna survive, so I gotta make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make it go a little faster. I got a little carried away, and now it looks like a time bomb, and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. That's impressive. Like, I don't know if this guy really makes all this stuff by himself, or like, does he have, I don't know, help with uh, manufacturing some of this? Because it's beyond just coding. We'll have to look up his background. Maybe some kind of uh, mechanical engineer, or I don't even know. Like, it's, it's impressive that you can do all these different things with building machines. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out. Well, it took me a long time to build and it's fucking beautiful, so cry more. It looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Y axis action. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. We're getting proud. You could like probably use that in the gym too. Like if you want to get a weight over to someone who's, you know, at the end of the of the room in, in the gym, just like you use their system and just drop some weights in their area. That would be another application. Where's a surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is the surgery robot. Massive payoff. Huge. I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shittertons. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. We need like a reaction video from Da Vinci <laughs> or maybe they should just hire this guy maybe incorporate his design or something I'm worried about this shit because when I built it I went ooga booga caveman brain metal strong metal not strong metal more like McDonald's play place trampoline but you got to take chances when you're innovating on the next great thing you don't want to take too many chances in the operating room though so he's got a long ways to go to making this clinically you know relevant and useful yeah okay please don't break it yeah! All right, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you, you are the controller. I got this VR hand tracking camera off of Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them into the surgery robot, and bing, bang, boom. Hmm. <laughs> oh, boom! <laughs> It is pretty cool that he's been able to build this thing. I mean, it's like super crude. You know, I wouldn't want it like hovering over me in the operating room. I wouldn't want to necessarily use it, but I think this is like a, an interesting concept that instead of having all those dials that are used with the Da Vinci, maybe you can just, you know, use your hand motion. Boom, fuck you Da Vinci Robotics. You can move my thing with just floating your hand around. Robot, go here. Oh, robot, do surgery here. Oh no, patient bleeding there. Oh, do surgery there on that part. How about you do surgery over here you know he, he's creating scenarios of like almost like kind of trauma or emergency surgery most of the time da Vinci is not used for those applications it's used for more kind of controlled environments where you have to remove a prostate or remove a cancer that's intricately tied in with the surrounding tissues it's not so much used in like the trauma orthopedic type of procedures where you ha just have like lots of bleeding and you know lots of things happening where you have to move around the table often. Maybe one day 
something like this can be applied in those settings as well. Before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum because otherwise it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. When you really think about it, scalpels are just shitty smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better knives? Like, uh, hello, we already have those. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> oh, Look at the fucking knife. <laughs> Unlike some other surgical <laughs> systems, we've run a it's gamut a of tests to knife. ensure our machine has power. I'm gonna stab a pineapple with oh, fuck. Commencing the operation. Oh my god. Operate on it. Surgery <laughs> over here now. Um, patient, small incision. Uh, small incision, we'll move the patient. Commence surgery on the patient. I like how he has a stethoscope on there on his around his neck for uh, for surgery. Yeah, <laughs> surgeons don't wear stethoscopes like that. That's funny. Real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest here, oh, uh, we can. <laughs> Uh, a little bit more difficult oh for some person. It's hard to watch. It. Uh, well, after you've been in the OR, and you know, I, I'm in the OR all the time, and it, it's like it's a little bit more about like watching a horror movie here than than something from the OR. There's a big knife going into this doll with like blood coming out. It's crazy. Can, okay. oh a little bit God. more difficult for some procedures, but not. <laughs> This is not surgery. This is uh, honestly looks like some sadistic stuff right here. It's kind of crazy. You can see you still have a lot more accurate control than a lot of surgical systems. Fuck off. Like I was saying, moving the patient is a lot easier with the system. Like normally you'd have to manually move them. Would, be, uh, would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, seems a little dangerous. Okay, oh I appreciate the feedback. You're wrong. Last but not least, we've made our machine so intuitive that anyone can do surgery with no prior training. So you've never seen this machine before in your life? No. This is perfect because this study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of him. Not too close, because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your hand out. <laughs> I'm shocked that like no one was injured in the making of this video. Oh my God. We're gonna make a small incision right above the ear. That's some messed up brain surgery right there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, clearly, well, fuck. Oh, cut. You're clearly like, another incision to stop. Plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Nice. Yeah, you're perfect. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, this. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh my god, this is like getting crazy, <laughs> really out of hand here. It would have been great if you actually like applied a couple of different instruments and maybe had like a second system and tried to actually suture or do something that would be like beneficial <laughs> to, to surgery down the road potentially, but this is just like crazy. I mean, I feel like I'm watching a horror movie. Patients over here and you don't want them to be over there. Move them over here. Do some surgery over here. Move them back. I don't even know what surgery this supposed to be. It'd be fun to invite this guy into the OR and actually show him what it's like. I know he's kidding around here, but it would be nice to apply his skill set to like something a little bit more practical and useful. Maybe if he spent some time in the OR, he'd be able to help us out with like advancing robotics and surgery. Yeah, maybe I'll invite this guy out to come watch me. I feel like there's a lot of potential innovation to be made in hair restoration when it comes to surgery. I have a whole video on the artist robot in hair surgery surgery and why I don't use it in my practice and why I don't think it's it's ready for prime time. But I think like a miniaturized version of something like the artist robot, but still retains a lot of like the flexibility of what using your hand can do in hair surgery. Something like that would be super helpful. So it'd be fun to work with Michael on making something like that happen. This still to me looks like something out of a horror movie rather than something that's useful for surgery. So I'm sure he'll get there eventually. If if you're a hospital looking to try it out, maybe I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Fuck you, Da Vinci Robots, bye. Well, 
I don't think he's necessarily gonna get a job with Da Vinci because he just cursed them out throughout this video. But hey, you never know. Once again, this is a guy with some skills for sure. It would be nice to see him applying it in a more kind of a user-friendly way. And it'd be fun to talk to him about, you know, what we can actually do in hair surgery or facial plastics, maybe a little less so. But I think in hair, it's really ripe for innovation and applying all of his kind of computer coding skills and the virtual reality stuff. So I don't know, maybe I'll reach out. Cool. Well, thanks. Hope you guys enjoyed that reaction to uh, Michael Reeves' I Built a Surgery Robot. That is pretty entertaining stuff. Once again, if you like the channel, please make sure to subscribe and comment below. Take care, guys. See ya.